Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you that we are a new creation through you and your great design of salvation. Lord, open our hearts today and take our hardened hearts and soften them with your love and comfort and grace as we enjoy being received back in your arms like the prodigal son. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a story out in the Middle Ages that goes something like this. In Rome, the cardinals came to the Pope, and the cardinals were like the chief pastors and teachers. And they said to the Pope, Rome is a Christian city. We should ask the Jews to, to move on and have their own city of their own. And the Pope goes, now wait a minute, let me sit down and let me talk to the chief rabbi and we'll discuss this as theologians. And so he invited the chief rabbi in. He goes, chief rabbi, we, um, both of our religious group uses symbols. So today in our discussion, let's just use symbols and not words. And the rabbi, that sounds fine. And so the Pope first made a big circle. And then the chief rabbi pointed. And then the, the Pope had both of his arms and went out. And the chief rabbi went like this. And then the Pope looked around and saw an apple. He grabbed an apple and pointed to the apple. And then the rabbi thought, and then he got out of his, his pocket there, his bread, the matzah. And the Pope goes very well. I think we had a good discussion today. I feel really good about this. And the chief rabbi left. And then the cardinals came in and goes, how did it go? And I goes, the Pope goes, I don't know why you're so, so upset or fussy about this. I told the chief rabbi that the world has one church in the world. And he pointed, and you're the man. You're in charge. And then I said that we have both two kingdoms, the secular and the church. And he pointed with two fingers, saying that you're in charge of both of them. And then I grabbed that apple. I say, some people think the earth is round. And he grabbed out his bread. No, the earth is flat. I think we can live peacefully. Well, the chief rabbi went home. And the wife goes, how'd it go? He goes, I'm really foggy about our communication. Um, you know, he said that um, we got you surrounded. But I says, we can still get to you. And then the Pope says, I'm, we're going to cut you into pieces. And I go, we can poke your eyes out. And then we took out our lunch. His apple and my bread. Communication. Or Jesus uses stories to share spiritual truth. And it's interesting where we are in our lives, how we interpret that story of the prodigal son or the older son or the incredible loving father. Oh, my goodness. There's a mouse up here. Oh, look at this. I just caught myself a mouse on the computer mouse. In our theme today, we're looking at the computer as our spiritual lives. And today, we're going to take a look at when we're clicking and going through our emails or our, um, the internet, how easy it is to get trapped with viruses. We think it's, it's, it's innocent, what we're doing, or an email that we don't know the person's name, but they say we just looks like we want some money or inherit some money, and it's easy for us to click things, and all of a sudden we have what? A virus. And so today, as you look at the prodigal son, and you know, viruses, they come in all shapes and sizes, and you kind of go back to Adam and Eve, where Satan tricked going through an animal, of one of their favorite animals, to communicate a virus, something that's harmless, that you can be like God, you can be in control, and it sinks us in little by little, the virus comes Viruses in the computer world are viruses or worms or the Trojan horse. There's a lot of different names, Armageddon, Lockjaw, Actrax, a lot of different things named or man-made virus, a terrible sin that gets into our computer and it can shut it down and we can lose data and everything else. In the same way, Satan uses little, what we think are harmless viruses, harmless things that we can start searching or clicking. 
And all of a sudden you know, well, little by little, our computer is invested with sin. The prodigal son, boy, he saw a, a, a different path. He didn't want to stay in his family's business. It's kind of like a story that was talked about where there was a, a father at a pizza place in Baltimore, and the younger son goes, Dad, I really don't see my future here. Can I have some funds that would, would be mine, the pizza place, and let me embark on my own journey? So the father gave him some funds, and he picked up his girlfriend, and they headed to Las Vegas. But there he took the money and he gambled and used it on things unhealthy like drugs and so on. And even bought friends with his money. He found himself broken. And then being a waiter at one of the incredible hotels there. But he was so broke that he would even f eat food on the tables that he would clean up. And realizing that. Life was much better back in Baltimore, and he called his dad and his God. Dad sent him a ticket back to Baltimore, and they had a big pizza party celebration. Sin can get us, and it does. That's why we have confession. What a blessing to have Pastor Dave with us this morning. His wife, Maggie, with a brain tumor on a journey the last several months. As many of you know, we thank you for your prayers and bringing food over and encouraging. And he was mentioning about a month ago, we had him team up with us. And then that early Sunday morning, he called at the ER saying he couldn't come. Confession is very important for us. And that's starting to click back to being restored on our spiritual life. Is that younger son realized that, you know what, I messed up. And that's the first click of forgiveness is realizing that I messed up. The second click is now is to find the help to get us restored. And he thought he could fix it, saying, I can be a servant. But the second click is approaching the one you offended. And that was that he came to his dad and confessed his sins. But anyway, I don't know about you, but I can never fix a virus on the computer. <laughs> I need help. I need someone who's an expert to clean up my mess, what I've done. And that's why we come on every Sunday morning in ministries throughout the week to come and have a kind of like a computer expert to come and help us become a new creation. Kind of a powerful story of a person who was born in Japan back in 1909. His name is Sugi Harry. And his Goals in life was being a, be an ambassador for Japan and Russia. And he got so close, he, he got all the way to being an ambassador of Lithuania. But it was a time of Hitler reign. And one morning he woke up, and there's hundreds of Jews at his house wanting a visa to go to Japan. And so he, three times... And you can see this on the internet, it's amazing, is that he requested a visa for all these people. More Jews were coming at his door trying to get away from Hitler's reign. And three times Japan denied him. But he filled for them. And so he made out visas anyway. And for the next month, all the way until he was asked to leave his post on the train, he was sending out visas and over several thousand people were rescued from that evilness. Ambassador. And that's what's exciting for us today is that Christ became our ambassadors to free us, to save us. And now he calls us to be ambassadors. But a lot of times, if we haven't been in the prodigal son's shoes, we're the older son's shoes saying, I can't believe my dad is bringing that younger brother back after all he's done. And guess what? Here comes another virus. You might have been a part of the church all your life. You probably haven't, some of you probably have not had the difficulties as others. And it's easy for Satan to get into our hearts too and get the virus in us to have a hardened heart for those who are lost and coming back. There is a, a great radio program and then a TV sitcom, a comedy making fun of people. Um, it was called Andy and Amos. And it was a sitcom that um, comes and it talks about, it was one of the sitcoms where they had a psychic come in and 
kept slapping Amos on the chest. And Amos was getting so upset throughout the program, irritated. He wanted to get back at this guy that kept slapping him on the chest. And so he was ready for the next time. And he had dynamite wrapped on his chest. It was the next time, he told Andy, the next time he comes, he's going to get a surprise. And so, as Susan just said, so will you. That's the virus of sin is that no matter what side of the tracks you on, and we've all been the prodigal son, we've all done things, done things that have been sinful, and we've all been on the other side of being prideful and so on. But today we rejoice of the father who ran to the son. And not only ran to the son to welcome him back, he also went to the older son as well. It's Jesus that comes to us to embrace saying, hey, the big picture in life is that you're part of my family and you always will be. And what a blessing that is, is that when we have viruses that penetrate our hearts, our minds, we got to repair Savior that does some amazing things that get us back to being an ambassador of love and forgiveness and grace. Louis Armstrong was doing a concert in London. And, um, and there's a lot of people that were anti-American. And one of the English actors, Lawrence Olivier, after the concert goes, boy, if there's any anti-American in that concert, Louis, you blew with your horn that away. When we're ambassadors of Jesus Christ, forgiven, new creation, all of a sudden we can come into a room and we can blow that sinfulness away with the beautiful of Jesus Christ as our ambassador. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time